Alright guys, so welcome to proofs on triangles, which are obviously like your favorite thing in the whole world. Proofs, obviously. It's like, oh, triangles, this is easy. They're like, how are they going to make it tricky? Ugh. Uh, I will say that if you've done okay on proofs so far, that triangle proofs, I don't want to say I think are easy. Most students have told me that if they just learned the, how to write them, that they made the most sense to them compared to some of the other proofs you've done. So I'm not saying, oh, it's easy, don't try, but that it tends to be something less scary um, now that we're getting slowly better at proofs. Um, so of course, I have the homework up. So if you guys have looked through that answer key, have any questions, you know, of course, come on a call and we could talk about it. But I left this up here also because when we go to write proofs, we might have things, like, let me give you a, a photo example of what, like, a proof might have been. Like, maybe this problem told me that this segment equals this segment. So they told me that side. And the problem told me these two angles, right? And then I saw something called vertical angles, and that meant that they were congruent, so I could find that one. Then I could say, yes, these two triangles are congruent, because why? And I'd have to look at where they're structured, not necessarily the order I wrote them in, but the order that they are in here, and I'd say, this is why they're congruent. So you're gonna kind of see that kind of logic coming into today. Some things that I'm gonna tell you, most of these proof steps come in what I call a one block, a two block, or a three block as far as things that I'm going to write. And if you really focus in on that, this I think is going to make a lot of sense. So things that are gonna be a one block is either it flat out gives it to you, or it's like a reflexive side that I can see. Because so I can say, oh, they share this side that's the same for both of them. Why reflexive? Okay, those are the kind of things that are going to be a one block, like one line of code to correctly say it's an angle or a side. Something that occurs in a two block is going to be vocabulary. So for example, I might notice that something is vertical angles, and then I will say that that means they're congruent. Or maybe we're going to see something cut in half. So it's going to say that they are, bi they are a bisector, or they've been bisected, and we will say that means it's congruent. Or that, hey, this is what's called a midpoint, and we know that midpoints are things that are congruent. If it's something that I can literally see a vocabulary word, then I can put that they're equal to each other. Um, what ends up being a three block is usually something that is like a symbol notation. So like um, a great example of that would maybe if the line somehow being parallel was important, I might mention like, hey, it says they're parallel. That means I have ultra interior angles, which are congruent. So the symbol will usually go to vocab, go to what I know about them. So if they give you the vocab, it's a two step. If they give you a symbol that means vocab, then it ends up being a three step. And another popular example uh, that we'll see a lot is they'll reference the perpendicular, and but they'll use it as a symbol. So I'll know that, hey, you told me given the symbol, it means that I have, let's say, right angles, and all right angles are congruent because they're all 90 degrees. And I'll talk about that step, but I'm just giving this kind of a, a starting thought, and if you walk into the proofs thinking like this, they're going to be pretty easy. Now, these proofs are technically in the packet on page 19, but they're kind of all squished together, and there's really not, in my opinion, the proper space to like work these all out. So you probably want to work these in another sheet of paper. And I even told my kids in person that have the packet to like not even try to squeeze these packets. It's good to do another sheet of paper because before a quiz or a test, you could come back and like look at a blank paper with no visual reminders of what you're doing and you can try them out again and you can kind of check with your answer key. All right, so I think I have four proofs I wanna get through, so let's get started. Um, let's talk about what I know and then we'll talk about making it happen here. So I basically know that side DE is congruent to side AB. I know that side EF is congruent to side BC. And they tell me that angle E and angle B are right angles. And they use like a vocabulary word with that. Um, and so I'll address that. But that, of course, is side angle side. So I'm expecting to be able to say, yes, these are congruent. And I just have to say like, well, why did I know that? Well, the first thing, and I'm going to be honest with you. Normally in proofs, I would write like all my givens on one line. Like, given, 
I tend to write these as I need them because it helps me really see that one block, two block, three block thing that I was talking about. Um, but again, that's sort of a personal preference. So what I'm not gonna normally do is write both of these on one line, even though maybe on a really easy question I would, you'll see on harder ones why I like to leave them spaced out. So the one I did in red is I know that segment DE is congruent to segment AB that's given. That is literally a side that I know. And this isn't like part of the proof, it's more just like me going, I have a side. The next thing it told me was that EF was congruent to BC, also given, and that is of course a side. The next thing that I know are that angle E, comma, angle B are RA. It's like they tell me that they are right angles, that's given. And what that means is they're congruent. So this is a step that's a new step, but we'll see it happen quite a bit is that why we know they're congruent is kind of by definition, right angles are 90 degrees. Um, and if they're 90 and they're all 90, then they have to all be congruent to each other. So I'm not saying you need to go back and look, but there was a random theorem day when we were talking about parallel and perpendiculars, that when you have perpendicular lines, that it creates four right angles. And there was a, a theorem that says basically, hey, if, if I'm a right angle, then I'm 90 degrees. And like, if I have two right angles and they're both 90 degrees, and if I equal 90 and you equal 90, we're congruent. Like, there's this little conversation that gets it to a theorem, which means I can now use it as one line of code instead of several lines of code. And so why do I know these are congruent? Um, I personally just kind of tend to put like, RAs are congruent. Like, or I also see people write all, RAs are congruent, because like all right angles are congruent to each other. They're all 90. Like by definition, they are the same size and shape as each other. Cool. So RAs are congruent is my reason, and that was an angle that I found. At this point, I have enough things. Are they structured in a way that makes sense? Yes, side, angle, side. Notice again, they don't have to appear in side, angle, side order here. This is just me saying, yes, I found all my three things, so I think I'm done. Here's the order that they make sense, so yes, Triangle DEF is totally congruent to triangle ABC. And why do I know that? Side angle side. And you don't have to say, like, the side angle side congruency postulate. Like, it's just side angle side. All right, so not a challenging proof just to kind of start showing me things like this new step that all right angles are congruent to each other. Next one. Right, we'll set up here. They are telling me that DG is congruent to EF, so D to G is congruent to E to F. I know that A is a midpoint of GF. If A is a midpoint, what that will mean is that these two are congruent to each other. Um, so again, I'm thinking out loud, and you basically, you told me that that's already the same. You said the word midpoint, so that's going to be like a two block, like a vocab word will mean that those are congruent. Um, let's see if there's anything else it mentions. It says that these are perpendicular. Um, so like DG is perpendicular to GF. Um, so they're referring to these. Now, like I said, when you see a symbol, it's usually a three block. Because I'm going to say you told me the symbol. I know that means 90 degree right angles. And then all right angles are congruent. right? So again, if it said right angles, then right angles are congruent. This is symbol that means right angles and they're congruent. So here's literally my setup, and then I plan to write that my triangles are congruent at that point. Like that is literally my game plan. How are these structured? They're structured in side, angle, side order. So I expect to say at the end that this is because side and angle side. All right, so let's fill everything in. I know that DG is congruent to EF given, and that's a sign. And A is the midpoint of GF, so I tend to write like A, M, D, P, T is like the little shortcut for midpoint of like GF. Now I will say you want to be careful whenever like, like we'll, I'm sure we'll see it in another example, when it says bisect, make sure we see that it's bisecting a side versus bisecting an angle so that we're kind of doing the right thing. So this is a given statement, 
And then what does that mean? It means that from G to A and to A to F are congruent. So from G to A is congruent to A to F. And again, these could be like flip-flopped order, but that's what I know. Why do I know that? Um, I'm just gonna say it's the definition of midpoint. Like midpoint means that those two things are perfectly split and therefore congruent segments. The last thing is you told me that DG perpendicular to GF and also EF perpendicular to GF given. Like I said, some people might write all of these in their given and that's okay. I just like the visual structure of one, two, and three blocks. So I know I did not miss a step when I'm writing it. Um, I did put both of these together because they're helping me write the same statement. So if that's the case, then I know that these are right angles. Now, I'm going to be honest, because this is a single vertex and there's no confusion, I'm allowed to call that like angle G and angle F are RAs. But if this was something that was like more crisscrossy, I might have to call it like angle DGA. I would have to tell you because if you just said G, I wouldn't know which one you're talking about. Um, another thing that's a trick that, again, I'm pretty sure will happen on one of these. If it's something that you would have to label with three things and you don't want to, you can, in your picture, if you call this like one and two, then I'll let you call it angle one and angle two as long as it's labeled. And again, I'm 90% sure that shows up in a little bit, so no worries. So again, the perpendicularness means that they're right angles, and that is what we call just the definition of that simple. And if they're right angles, we know that they are congruent to each other. Why? Because right angles are congruent. Okay, they're all 90 degrees. This is my, I should have set it up here earlier, this was a side that I found, and here this was the angle that I found. Are the two triangles congruent? It's triangle DGA with EFA, and yes, because of side angle side. Not because of the order I wrote them in here, but because of the order that they are correctly congruent from the picture. Two more. Let's see what we got. Let's prep my one, two, three blocks. I have that CD bisects a side. So CD is bisecting A to B. So that is letting me know that these two are congruent. So that is a vocab word that's going to give me things that are equal. I have basically the same thing, but this time that AB is bisecting CD. So that's going to be another like bisecting means they're congruent. Um, that's all it tells me, but in a picture, I can see vertical angles. And when I can see a vocab word, that's also a two block. So I'm basically having three different vocab blocks and then my congruency statement. And these are structured side, angle, side. So I'm expecting to say that my proof of triangle AED will be congruent to triangle BEC because of side, angle, side. I just need to explain that I have all of those things. So step one, CD bisects AB given that meant that AE segment is congruent to EB segment definition of bisect. The next one's literally basically a repeat AB bisects CD told me that. That meant that CE was congruent to ED. Again, definition of, from a segment, of bisect. And lastly, I can see vertical angles. Now, I can't call these angle E because then I'm like, well, which of the four are you talking about, right? I could call these like angle CEB and angle AED, but y'all generally don't like writing a whole lot anyway. So if we want to avoid that, just give these numbers. So just like in your eeny, meeny, miny, mo one and two, as long as it's there, I can come over here and say, angle one comma angle two are VAs. Why? Definition of VA. So when I see something like vertical angles, alternate interior, if that were to come up again, you, know, you can still see those things. And then what do we know about them? that angle one is congruent to angle two because if vertical angle, then congruent. And I guess if we're going back, we could say like 
earlier, like with the right angle one, right angles are congruent. You could say like if R A, then congruent, like that would also be appropriate. Um, some people know this is called the vertical angles theorem, um, or they to a point where we know that vertical angles are congruent. Like I'm pretty okay. Like I know that we get very nitpicky about like all these little pieces, but sometimes the explanations as we've started to use them a lot we kind of get a little more relaxed on like, okay, right is if then, or just put vertical angles congruent, that kind of thing. All right, let's look at one more, and then you have a homework to sort of practice for on your own that are about this difficulty level. So let's see what this question is talking about and write my prep. So I see that AR is perpendicular to CB. So AR perpendicular to CB. Okay, because that is a symbol, I'm expecting that three block, right? Symbol means right angles means congruent. I see that AR bisects an angle. So AR is bisecting CAB. So that means that these two angles will be congruent. That is going to be a two block because it's a vocab word and then I know that they're congruent. I then don't have any other information so the third thing that I know is that these are equal to each other because they are a shared side. And if this is a direct given that something is congruent that you need or a reflexive side that you need, that is a single step to say, hey, we both are that side and we're equal to each other. Like if we share the side, those are equal. This is an angle, a side, an angle in that order. So I expect to write my triangle as congruent statement because of angle side angle and what are the triangles ACR is congruent to ABR so now I just need to fill in all this information like I said I highly encourage you to leave your given separate instead of just writing them all in one line because it makes it much easier to remember like the two block three block one block things that I'm teaching you so I know that AR is perpendicular to CB given I want to refer to these by a number, so I'm just going to call them 1 and 2. So that means that angle 1 and angle 2 are right angles. Why? That is the definition of what this upside down T means, right? And then what's important about that is that I get these two things to be congruent because I need to know that that angle is the same as the other angle. And again, I would accept things like if R A than congruent or just that right angles are congruent. Because it's not like this is a if we're parallel and blah, blah, blah. Like, like right angles are always congruent. Just like vertical angles are always congruent. But like something like alternate interior, that no, that you would have to say if parallel and alternate interior, then I know they're congruent. But things like right angles and vertical angles, they're just congruent. Vocab word, AR segment, bisects angle CAB, that was a given in the problem. And again, I wanna to refer to these by just a number, so I'm gonna just call them two and three. And I'm gonna say that angle two is congruent to angle three. Why? Definition of what the word bisect means. Because if it bisects, we know that means chop in half perfectly. So we're explaining that to somebody else and saying that that is another angle that I know. And lastly, kind of like the homework, we go, hey, they also share that side. So that is side length AR. And this is where we finally see that reflexive step like really show up in a proof. That segment AR is the same as itself because they both use it. They both touch it. That segment is the same as itself. That is a reflexive step. And that is a side that they share. And again, when you write your statement, don't just write it in the order you found them, write in the order that they're true, which was angle, side, angle, like what we were practicing on the homework. Okay, so I kind of jumped around and did some like random examples. If we go back and look, it was like a problem one, three, um, was it, no, one, three, four, and seven. So I think I purposely bounced around to find like different vocab words and situations that would happen. So your homework is the rest of that page. So uh, whatever page we were just on, we did four together. I want you to do the other four. This says quiz tomorrow. That's not true. We ended up having um, a surprise DLA get thrown onto us. Yay! 
Um, and I'm just gonna be honest with you, you really can't study for a DLA. We don't even have them in advance. So the district just kind of brings them to us and we go like, yay, let's give it. So don't panic about it. Don't worry about it. Um, but basically this week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, um, we are learning proofs, learning proofs, learning proofs, taking an actual quiz. So I'm gonna sort of like fix all of this because the DLA messed up these two quiz days. So your quiz is actually on this week, Thursday. It will include some proofs. It will include other triangle math that we've been working on. Friday is the DLA. So basically we're gonna work on proofs for three days, take a quiz over like triangles, just stop and take this DLA and be like, okay, great, let's see what's on it together. Yay, try our best, see what happens. Uh, we do, I'm not saying we curve them, that's maybe the wrong word to use, um, but we definitely take a look at them once they're given and we go, okay, of these questions, how many of them were reasonable? And we really focus on, were they getting most of the ones right that we think they should? And we take that into account very heavily when we assign a grade. So I don't want you to be like, oh my gosh, there was 15 questions and like five of them I knew and 10 of them were crazy. Okay, we probably agree with you, right? But there's other times like, oh wow, like 12 of those were actually pretty easy and three were crazy. So, you know, so I don't want you to think, oh, you know, they're all gonna be crazy, right? It just depends. Uh, depends on the year, depends who wrote them at the district. So just let's see what happens. I'm just letting you know, and I'm talking a lot, that we, we are gonna take into account the difficulty level that they gave um, when we are assigning a grade for that. So just keep that in mind. But for your own information, again, working on proofs all week, quiz on triangles, random DLA. Monday, we will finish up our conversation of proofs and triangles. Chapter worksheet will be Tuesday and the test is due after that. So if you've not started on that chapter worksheet, yeah, you need to be working on that this week too, right? These two quiz and DLA days would be great days when we don't have a homework that you are kind of working on that over that weekend. So you're coming in basically done. Okay, so come on these calls if you have questions on proofs. If you have been working on your chapter worksheet, you want to ask about things that you're getting stuck on right now, start doing that like right away. All right, I'm gonna stop talking now. Have a great day.